So our first dumb atheist meme of the day is this one. Well, there's one. Now, people say, hey, dinosaurs on the ark. It's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Noah's ark makes no sense. I've seen renderings of dinosaurs. How do you get those massive things all on a boat together? It makes no sense. Well, all those questions can be answered with two facts. Fact number one, it would be a bad idea to take fully grown, fully mature anything on a boat if the goal is, after about a year floating around, those animals get off the boat and reproduce. All the animals on the ark were young. It only makes sense. Fact number two, half of all currently discovered dinosaurs are estimated to weigh under a ton at full maturity. It's relatively small. And one of the largest we've ever discovered, which weighs, as they estimate, about 65 tons, its egg is the size of a football. So the dinosaurs could fit on the ark. Here's the next one. So the billions of people who existed before your Jesus are burning in hell for being born too early in history? Now, the biggest problem with this meme is that there's never been a time before Jesus. He's always been God, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and nothing was created without the Word. That's John 1, and John's talking about Christ. Now, what they're confusing is, is when Jesus took on flesh and dwelt among us and died in our place for the sins of his people. They're confusing that. But before that, Jesus has eternally been the Son, and Jesus has eternally eternally been the lamb. Look at Revelation 13, 8. There's this lamb, the one who was slain from the creation of the world. What that means is when you look at the Old Testament, the promise that God made to Adam and Eve in Genesis 3, 15, there will be one born of the woman who will crush the head of the serpent and the serpent will bite his heel. That's about Jesus. When you look at Abraham, someone will be born in your family who will bless all the nations. God promised Abraham. He's talking about about Jesus. When you look at Moses and the people of Israel and the sacrificial system and the temple system, that is echoing Jesus as our sacrifice and our high priest. And while you may say, well, that makes no sense. They didn't have full knowledge of what was going on or what was happening. They just trusted in, in what God said. You know what that's called? It's called faith. And the Bible says God credited that to Abram as righteousness, okay? That's what saves people. It's not our own works. It's not deeply understanding God's works even necessarily. It's trusting in the promises of God. This next one is an actual verse in the Bible. Here it is. Leviticus 26, 29, you will eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters. I had to do a lot of Photoshop work to make this thing at PG rated. There's a lot of disturbing details going on in this picture. And I have no clue why a, a Middle Ages artist decided to paint this verse of all verses. Who knows? Bizarre to me. The reality is there's a lot of cannibalism in the Old Testament. And before you go, oh my gosh, what are you talking about? Well, it's every time that God warned the people of Israel. He said to them, you know what? If you engage in the behaviors of your neighbors, if you stop following me and loving me and you start to worship the dead idols of the nations around you, awful things are going to happen. And unfortunately, this, this warning in Leviticus actually comes true during the reign of one of the kings of Israel. Starvation was widespread, they abandoned God, and they had to resort to cannibalism. You gotta remember, scripture, the Bible, Old Testament, a lot of it is historical narrative. It's not saying, hey, go eat your kids. That's not the, the moral of the Old Testament. This is a warning of God, and unfortunately, because the Israelites abandoned abandoned him, it came true. So this next one has even more Old Testament misunderstandings. Here it is. Prophet Micaiah continued, I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, 1 Kings 22, 19, versus no one has ever seen God, 1 John 4, 12. And their conclusion is, God didn't know Micaiah saw him. Now, this is just a complete misunderstanding of the literary styles of the Bible. And there's lots, okay? There's poetry, 
There's historical narrative. Sometimes God is giving an explicit command. Sometimes God is giving an explicit warning. We have to use our brains that he gave us and the context of what's going on in this chapter or letter or book around it to understand what God is trying to communicate. We have to read the Bible like we read every other book. You could pick a verse out of any novel and make strange and weird assessments of what it's talking about. You have to take it as a whole. That's how we should read the Bible. What's going on here is, is that Micaiah is a prophet of Israel, sees God in a vision where God warns him, hey, if this king doesn't repent, I'm going to destroy the nation because he's turned from me. So he's relaying a prophecy. This verse in the New Testament is simply saying, no one has ever looked at the fullness of the glory of God's face. And the reason we know that is because of Exodus 33. Moses asked God, God, can I see you in all your glory? Can I see your face? And God says, no, you you can't see me in all your holiness. You wouldn't be able to take it. You You would just be evaporated. So God says, but because I love you and because I know you trust me, you can cover your face and I'm gonna pass by and and you can see my back so you can get just a glimpse of my glory. So this verse. This is just a misrepresentation and misunderstanding of literary styles in the Old and the New Testament. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment so I can continue to make more and respond to these memes. We can learn more about Christianity.